we are going to have a very dynamic conversation about coming out of imposter syndrome. How many of you have ever felt like, as a founder, as an entrepreneur, that am I supposed to be here? Am I in the right room? Am I valid? Dr. J is going to come talk to this about this, but I want to tell you a little bit about this phenomenal woman. So, Dr. Deshara Sakar is an inventor, an entrepreneur with a passion for women's development. She has a PhD in chemical engineering and has developed two patents. That's a badass lady over there. Her programs have helped women in business develop work-life balance. We all need that. Along with accountability, minimizing stress, anxiety, and self-doubt. Please give a warm milestones welcome to Dr. J. So welcome, everyone. Good morning. It's still morning, I think. We have a few minutes of the morning left. <laughs> How is everybody doing? Just good. There we go. <laughs> we just talked about boundaries. How energizing was that? Yes? Scary for some people? Energizing? No? Yes? Very apprehensive? That's all right. Boundaries are not easy until we understand them. We have to set them. So, first of all, I would love to take this time to thank the NASDAQ Entrepreneurship Center, Jamie, Nikki, um, Zoe. The entire team, Brooke, and the Wells Fargo Bank for supporting and creating this platform. We heard that 1,500 women have been impacted by this program. How amazing is that? Can we give them a round of applause? Such a wonderful team. And work like this cannot be done with the right, without the right heart. And interacting with each and every one of the team members, we see how much heart and love they pour into what they do. And it is our responsibility to pay it forward. So my name is Jashri Sarkar. You can call me Jay. Uh, <clears throat> I am from the country of India. Now what I want you to visualize is growing up with dyslexia, not knowing what dyslexia is, and being judged as being careless. You just don't pay enough attention. <clears throat> right? And you will never be good enough because you are very curious. What does that do to their self-image as little bit? Okay. We talk about imposter syndrome, we all experience it. The difference is, we may or may not recognize it. And that's, that's okay, that's why we are here to learn. Learn from the experience of from wonderful, wonderful and phenomenal women who have gone that distance. And see, they are still on that journey, as we all will be as well. So my passion for women's development comes from understanding that we are groomed in an environment that is not attuned to helping women be their best. And when I say women, when we are born, when we are growing up, our environment doesn't see us as equals on many occasions. Unfortunately, it is the reality we live in. I'm not saying that is right or wrong. What I'm saying is there are a lot of amazing women who have paved the way so we can be here today. Can we give them a round of applause? We may or may not know them. There was a time when we could not vote. A lot of women sacrificed their lives and ambitions to get us here. And it is our responsibility to take it forward from here. And we can do that by addressing one of the biggest things that are challenges of our time that is imposter syndrome. So with that, I would love to invite Whitney Bible. She is the founder of Shifting Into Action. As an in-demand coach, speaker, trainer, and author, Whitney shares wisdom from her own life experiences and those of her clients and others with grace humility, and humor to drive change in today's business world. Her mission is to guide professionals as they reevaluate their values and priorities to move forward 
towards the work they love and help organizations create work, workspaces, and cultures where people want to work in. So thank you. She is the founder of creative and creative director of Jane and Vogue, an online boutique aimed at bettering women's health through fashion. She believes fashion speaks and fashion heals. Within three months of business launch, she was able to successfully acquire business with Walmart Marketplace, Amazon, and Meta platforms. She is currently serving as advisory board member at the UC Santa Barbara Engineering Leadership Program, and she is a proud circle member of the Milestone Circle at NASDAQ Entrepreneurship Center. She is also <laughs> completing her master's in pop population health management in John Hopkins Greenberg School of Public Health. <laughs> Next up is Christy. I love your passion, Christy. <laughs> She, uh, she is the founder of Fair Anything Inc., the pioneering software technology company building the future of food and beverage. Fair Anything helps business, uh, this businesses authentically connect to, unders uh, to underserved consumers through drink pairings to inspire enjoyment and increase sales. Christian. Kristen Duvier is the owner of Birth and Postpartum Doulas Agency in Grand Rapids, Michigan, that she founded in 2015. Her company is called Gold Coast Doulas LLC. The agency offers both virtual and in-person services and classes. Kristen co-hosts the podcast called Ask the Doulas and has an online course called Becoming a Mother. Anastasia, Anastasia Rotis is the founder of You Deserve Rest LLC. She is a rest coach and a strategist, travel planning magician, certified risk manager, queen of positivity, support, and accountability, creator of one human being and millions of tiny rest experiments. Her proprietary You Deserve Rest framework allows successful female entrepreneurs to enjoy guilt free rest. They need while still achieving success that will benefit both themselves and their future generations. So can we give them a round of applause? The first question that I have for all of you, and uh, we can start with, uh, with me, is what has been your experience and your journey with imposter syndrome. Well, thank you. Um, so my journey begins with, I, I, and when we talked about this, when we prepared, um, I shared a story that I had always seen myself as an analytical person. Prided myself in my, I would say intellectual gifts, I'll put it that way. Um, and not so much, and so my masculine side rather than my feminine side, right? The, the, the feminine gifts, um, heart-centered, that piece of me. And what I found that as I've journeyed and moved out of the work that I was doing, as a lawyer and a lobbyist, very much a man's world, I fit in really well in that space. And when I transitioned to becoming a coach and a consultant and needing to touch more on my feminine side, I didn't feel like I could. Um, and I, I kept missing the mark. And the way that showed up for me was procrastination. Um, I'd had earlier experience where I had come to a realization that I was a perfectionist, uh, something that caught me very much off guard um, and, and kept me from being able to perform 
in spaces that I hadn't performed in before because now I'm thinking I don't have what it takes to do that. And so it, it was that awakening that had me stop and really start to think about what are you doing? What is it that you want to do? And this goes to the conversation we had just a little while ago about boundaries, right? Which starts with values, where I, the way I look at it, everything starts with our values and um, priorities. And once we can figure that out, we can start making steps towards, strides towards the things that we want. So, yeah. anyone here relating to that? Being a perfectionist, wanting to be there, yeah, that is true for all of us. But not maybe not in every area, but in our work, somewhere we feel this is not quite good enough. Okay, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, can you Hi everyone. Um, good to see all of your beautiful faces. Um, for me, imposter syndrome, it's a lot of intersection. Um, it's so interesting, you know, I did sociology, science, and medicine um, for my undergrad. And one thing, I wrote a book called, um, I mean, like an article called I'm a, I'm a Subordinate because of the intersection of being an immigrant, black, um, African, accent, and also um, a woman, young, motivated. Um, I, I was given a lot of opportunities being in board groups, um, like in a very, very, really young age, like, you know, in my early 20s, I was already taking leads in a lot of projects. And, um, and then now God, all of a sudden, he's like, you know what, we're going to make you have a disability. And <laughs> I was told I'm going to be disabled forever. But I had to define that odd. I knew in my heart, um, if I was able to conquer every little element, every intersection, and come out strong, what is, what am I being taught with this situation right now? So now I'm embracing this situation and using this to still follow my vision and knowing that it, it does not matter what type of disability you have, or it can be physical, or it cannot be physical, you know, like mental body spirit, but like what you can do, just focus on your vision, your milestone, your goals. That's one thing I do. And I always believe in that, and that's what I, I keep on following. So I just had to redefine myself, redefine my world, create my business, continue looking fabulous. And I was like, <laughs> people will not know I have this until it's only today you guys, you ended up knowing this. Because I, I use fashion to speak for me. That's one thing I use all the time. Fashion can speak and fashion can heal. Oh, wonderful. So let me ask you a question. What are some of the thoughts you were going through when you discovered you had to take this journey forward? That's a good question. I wouldn't say it was an easy journey. It's been like five years coming to acceptance, you know, process of grief. I had to go to a lot of therapy, a lot of, you know, inter introspection. But one thing I did, the best superpower was looking inward. I had to stop, pause, and talk to my body and ask my body, what do you want? Do you want us to continue living? Do you want us to continue doing what we need to do? And it was still, I could still feel in my gut that my body really needed to continue on. So now that I take my body as a, as a team, we talk every day. Like in the morning, we have to do meditation. And I'm like, we're going to do this. Sometimes this left leg not work um, and I'm like you know what the right one will help you and we'll, we have to do some stretches I cannot do some stuff which I used to do every, I used to be very active some of the exercise I can't do anymore for now I always believe for now because I always define it odds but um, yeah like uh, it's all about just you know having a mindset that you're gonna overcome it what did you say I always define the odds how powerful is that can we all say that to ourselves? Every time we feel down and under, can we talk to ourselves with that level of kindness and hope? Can we? So why don't we make a note in our notebook that this is what I'm, this is the statement I am going to talk to myself. This will be my self-talk 
every time I question my ability. How about that? I can defy all odds. How powerful. This year, it's going to yours. So my story's a little bit different because coming from a Filipino culture, my parents were hardworking. Um, you don't really think about weaknesses or challenges. You just power through it. So I've worked in five industries. I've always worked myself from the bottom all the way to the up, you know, all the way, all, all the way to the top. I worked in um, different industries. I, uh, I'm on my fifth startup. And I just like to get things done because I want to be of service to people. Imposter syndrome for me came at a very unexpected time. Um, I launched Pair Anything in March of 2020. Um, we all know that it's the global pandemic, but hey, I'm up for the challenge. Two months later, my inspiration uh, for Pair Anything um, was a tribute to my culture, being able to pair wine with chicken adobo. Um, my inspiration was my mom. Two months after I launched, she unexpectedly passed. And I felt very raw and vulnerable. And here I am, being a woman of tech, um, being able to rise in, in every occasion, completely exposed. What I did every day to get out of bed, to be able to reaffirm my purpose, and to be of service to others, what got me through that was a simple lesson of grace. Opening myself up for grace, um, allowing others to be there for me. Uh, there's a word, it's called barakada. It's a Filipino word essentially translating, you know, your tribe. And never in my entire life have I ever been very vulnerable, but that also allowed me to be more authentic when I talk about pair anything. It's my first time that I ever introduced myself as a Filipino entrepreneur. It's the first time I ever talked about my culture. And so for that, I can say that I'm, I have appreciation uh, for what happened. I definitely do not wish for anyone to ever experience that um, grief, yet somehow it becomes a part of you and is something that I would say grounds me. There's a very sorry for your loss. It was not easy to cope with it, but you made it a purpose. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Can you give me a hand? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, Crystal, tell me story. Yes. So, I am a DI, so I like to be on stage. I never thought I had imposter syndrome. <laughs> so if you know DISC anyway. So um, I have a background in political fundraising and I worked in um, for SBC, AT&T. I was a President's Club winner. So I liked to, again, feel validated by others. Um, for the work I was doing. So becoming an entrepreneur was a whole different journey. And here I am, like, having worked in male-dominated industries, I'm a woman doing women's work. Doula means to serve. And I feel in my heart, my passion is to support women without judgment so they can thrive. And I've had a business partner up until recently, you know, going on eight years in business. So it was a we. When I described my purpose and my journey, it was always us as a team um, and really trying to break through like chambers of commerce and really getting into the business sector and um, getting some recognition for the work that doulas do um, to support families as a whole. And then when my business partner transitioned out a year ago, it became just me. So I was vulnerable and exposed. And I wasn't necessarily ready to share my personal story about why this means so much to me. Um, because again, as a doula, I don't wanna bring my own stories into my clients or my own journey. But as a older first time mom, I developed preeclampsia. I was on bed rest. Um, induced, and my daughter was in the NICU, and so 
I needed support. And then with my second child, I hired doulas and had a completely different experience. And so I wanted to be with women in that way. I'm starting as an educator and transitioning to the work full time and then having an agency with 25 other women supporting women. Oh my goodness, such a, such a beautiful story. Yeah. And one, one thing we see is as we go through our challenges, a lot of these women have found their purpose through those challenges and they've taken it inside out and now they're serving in their communities. We all do that in our own way, but do we recognize it? Most often than not. We look at sales and revenue and numbers, but do the numbers quantify humanity? There is no measure to humanity. And what makes humanity great is our vulnerability, our ability to have compassion when we go through tough situations. Before we are compassionate towards others, we always have to have compassion to ourselves. Otherwise, isn't it fake? Aren't we living a double standard? Right? Where we can't be, we are harsh to ourselves, we are our own self critic. But when I meet somebody who has a need, I say, Oh my God, I understand that. Oh, I don't understand myself. Right? It's very important to face that reality. It is not an easy journey. The reason I say it is not an easy journey, it is not easy to be vulnerable in front of people we do not know. It is not easy to be vulnerable in front of people who are expecting to share something great. Instead, we share our worst experience. Right? But it's not the worst experience, it's the ability, the, the courage to dig, dive, dive inside and bring out that amazing human that lives with us. So I give you all a big, um, I commend you all for the amazing courage, honesty that you have exhibited. I see another loss of words, guys. You bear it. <laughs> so, um, Ms. Kisla, could you share your journey with Impartial Sunday? My journey, um has been has taken many many different versions throughout my life and when the topic was presented i was like does anyone ever come out of imposter syndrome because to be honest i'm sitting on the stage this is my first time in front of an audience and i have my heart racing and i'm like someone told me yesterday they're like you're the best person to be on the stage and i'm like really am i am i am? Like, like we all have that i i've been it's, it's a daily practice, really, of reminding myself that I deserve to be here. I deserve to be heard. I deserve to take this space. And my journey, like one of the recent examples has been me going from the workforce from 13 years in a corporate world where I have, you know, to master degrees. I have some professional certifications. I have recognition. I have all the things and going into life coaching. Like, I was a risk manager. I was a person who, like, figures out what's wrong with the banking system, you know, that whole, like, failure of the next-door bank. Like, I would have been one of the people who would have been figuring it out. And here I am, like, giving life advice and doing rest coaching. I'm like, who am I? Is there even a certification that can prove to someone else that I'm good enough to be paid for? Can I ask for money? Like all these mental questions that I daily ask of myself, well, maybe not as much anymore simply because it, it takes a practice of like liking yourself. It takes yeah. a practice of me just seeing myself in the mirror and being like, yes, I am that person. I am that awesome to be on this stage. I, is it always like that? No, but people question me all the time. My family, we've talked about family boundaries. I had to convince my whole family that after all of the, my experience, that me completely leaving my six-figure job, stay stable, right? We've seen the tech layoffs. Everything is so stable these days, right? <laughs> At least no one can fire you from being a self-employed entrepreneur. Let me put you like that. But it's like, 
I had to con I had to con thank you. Right? No one can fire you from being self-employed and from doing what you want. You can fire yourself, but no one else. But I had to convince my family that I who have they who have they seen for my whole life and they've seen me achieve the things that I know I can do it. They were like, Are you sure? Are you sure this is wise? How about the paycheck? I'm like, so I need to be unhappy so you can be happy? Is that the, like, I had to convince myself that I deserve it, but I also had to convince everyone around me yesterday I shared that for me this, being in this space is so important because I get the connection of people who get me. Mm -hmm. And this is what helps me with my imposter syndrome because not only I know I'm not alone, I know that I deserve to be here. Wonderful. That is so yeah. wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Has anybody here realized that how imposter syndrome shows up is so different? It could be a health challenge, it could be a job situation, it could be a loss, it could be a personal vulnerable story that just breaks us inside. Regardless, the feelings we feel, the thoughts we have are exactly the same. Each one of us goes through that phase with the same apprehensions, with the same fears. Will I make it? Can I do this? Can I succeed? Is this for me? Will I ever be successful? Will I ever be on stage? Will I ever be financially successful? We all go through it. And we all live through it. The question is, in our secret life, what I call secret life is our own private path that nobody else has access to. Do we take the time to look in the mirror and say, I have amazing greatness in me, and I have something that is stopping my greatness as well. Instead of saying, I have good and I have bad. Right? Because it is our labels, how we label what we see, that creates our perspective, isn't it? We hear the word bad and we want to run away from it. That is why most of us cannot be completely honest with ourselves in our private thoughts. That's why we run away from being vulnerable. Because we think it is weak. A scary statistic from the United States Development Agency is that 90% of men and women in this world are biased towards women. That's scary, isn't it? Isn't it? If we do not want to be judged, what gives us the right to judge others? And more importantly, what gives us the right to judge ourselves? Aren't we all created equal? Aren't we all created from the same source? Yes? If we are created from the same source, we are different because imagine if, all, if there was no color, just black or white or just one color, would we have interesting outfits today? We would all look the same. Can you imagine an entirely white world? Everything being just white, we'd have to make shades every time to go out. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be blinding. Right? It's important that we celebrate our diversity. It's important that we celebrate that there's good times and bad times. If we don't have bad times, we never appreciate what is good. Right? We never appreciate when we succeed. And the way I see it, there's a saying, failure is a stepping stone to success. How many of us have deciphered what that means? Unless we fail, we do not take the next step. And when we fail, we stand firm. We fail long enough. We fail over and over again. We suddenly succeed. And then we take the next step up. That is how success is built. It is built on a lot of failures. People who are successful in life, people we see who represent greatness of, of this world in any field, they have failed most often than all of us can. They have had those private failures and they have found it within them to drag that greatness out of them, that courage, that perseverance, 
that is what it takes to beat this imposter syndrome at its own game. Because imposter syndrome is persistent. Are we? That's what we're talking about. So, <clears throat> now we talked about how each one of us has experienced imposter syndrome. Let me share with you a little story. Um, when I was going through engineering, imagine somebody who has dyslexia going through engineering school. It has to do with a lot of numbers. I couldn't keep them straight. And as I was going through my engineering school, um, I was at an internship at a big company. And the manager comes to me and says, hey, you're a woman. All you're going to do is get married, have kids. Why are you wasting a seat of, of engineering that a guy can take and provide for his family? And after that comment, I didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> I was like, what? That doesn't make any sense. I said, I'm as good an engineer as anybody else. Doesn't matter. So what does he do? We talked about uh, being excluded. That point on, I was never part of anything that I was supposed to be part of. I would find out after the fact. And then when I showed up, why are you late? You know, a lot of us have stories like that. Very similar, maybe in a different, maybe not at work, maybe in family. Okay? Doesn't matter. We all go through it. As long as we know that every human being in this world experiences it, what is the differentiator? Do you succumb to it? Do you accept it? Or you say thank you, but no thank you? Okay? It's very important to understand that. So for me, being in STEM, imposter syndrome was not something. I understood because every time somebody said, you cannot do this, or you're not good enough, they said, watch me, learn, and then follow. Follow, so you know how it's done. That's right. Not because I was arrogant, because that was the boundary I set for myself. Nobody else beyond me is going to determine what I am capable of or not. Mm -hmm. okay? But I could do that in my profession. You know what? Because I want to be somebody. When it came to personal life, there were no boundaries. So I was walked over every time, every time, especially in a culture where women played the second fiddle. I love the culture I come from. We worship goddesses, but we treat the women in our lives like they are anything but goddesses. That's a double standard. And that's why we want to change it. So, from your experience, what are some of the triggers? How does it, what triggers impact in women? A lot of times for me, it's the external trigger by someone either questioning me and my position or the activities that I'm doing. Uh, in personal life, it has been really evident when I uh, had my child four years ago that all the nurses who are supposed to know better than I do were telling me that I'm not feeding my child enough, that my body is not producing enough milk and all the things. And I was like, oh my God, I'm a bad mom. Like, I had to go through weeks of really struggling and trying to find more milk in my body. And then I, then I actually paused and I was like, you know what? It is not my story. My child is actually growing. My child is, excuse the details, is pooping enough. They're saying that's a good indicator of a healthy child. And I was like, I'm giving my child as much as I can, and it is enough, and I am enough. And since then on, because like children do change us, those of us who have, who have children, they, they do know it. But even without the child, it's like, we are enough. And, but we listen so much, and I listen so much to external voices that tell me different stories, that tell me the words about, not me, but about how I'm supposed to be, that start shaping what I think about myself. When I look at myself in the mirror, when I look at my images, when I hear my voice, it's been a while since I've enjoyed hearing my voice. You know, before, especially in corporate, you, you take all this like communication classes and they have you do a speaking exercise. And I was like, oh my God, like I hate hearing myself. And it's not because I am a bad person, but it was because I thought there was something wrong with my voice. There was something wrong with how I show up. Only 
after doing a lot of mindset and therapy for myself, I realized that A, there is nothing wrong with me and the way I show up and maybe I didn't like hearing myself because I was actually diminishing myself. I was making myself less than I need to be. I was making myself less bright. I was making myself less colorful and it was impacting how I saw myself and that's why I accepted the stories people told me about me. But when people judge me in my face, I was like, it's not your place. It's not your place. I had a boss once judge my choice of an engagement, of my engagement ring. I told him in a personal conversation, I was like, I like green color, so I want my engagement ring to be emerald. And a guy who has nothing to do with my personal life was like, why would you choose an emerald? And I was like, why do you care? <laughs> and then they judged my toenail color. Like I showed up once with open toe shoes and they were like, your toes are green. I'm like, yes, how is that relevant to the work I do? Like, how is that relevant? It's not relevant, but because they're in the position of power, they're in the position of potentially harming us, we, like, I started closing myself in and that impacted me and how I saw myself and what showed up in my life. But it's really about stopping and, and being like, am I telling myself that story or is someone else? Hmm. Acceptance, what we say yesterday yep. makes the world a difference. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you. For me, it, it shows up, as I mentioned earlier, in the perfectionism. And anytime I am doing something new, starting, you know, launching a new product or service or something like that, it, 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 it shows up, can you do, can, can I do this? And it's interesting, you both mentioned what other people say, and what I heard you both say is an experience that I have, is that if someone challenges what I can do, I'm like, watch me, yes. right? Yes, like <laughs> But it's the voice in my head that is the one that says, you can't do that. And so what I have learned that I have to do when, when that perfectionist voice steps in is to look at the objective evidence of my life that says I have done hard shit, yeah. right? I have done the hard things. I have done new, everything I've done, everything I do is something that I had not done before I have done it. Right, and therefore the, the evidence says yes, you can. And, I, and one of my mantras, daily mantras, is either I win or I learn. And so I'm going to, or I'm going to learn a lesson about it and redo it and redo it until I get where I'm going. Wonderful. Then there is an action item right there. Right? What is the action? Writing down, look at this, it's a card that has an answer, it's interesting. What is it? Where is it you're breaking those barriers for yourself? Every time you feel that, tell yourself, I can do it. I have done it. There is evidence. Thank you. It's not a card. It needs to be an ongoing list <laughs> where you add on all the time. Almost make it a daily, weekly practice of adding your own accomplishment because a year from now, you won't seem like, oh, this was nothing. It was not nothing when you were in that moment. I would add a little bit that it's also good to have a sister to remind you, a circle sister to remind you of your accomplishments because for me, I echo exactly what you said because um, thinking, about, thinking back, reflecting on my career, I've been very successful different industries, male-dominated industries in tech, even in the wine industry, hardly see any women in leadership. Yet, I always feel that, again, start on the bottom, because I feel inadequate to represent and, and contribute. But if you think about what I've accomplished, I've been able to solve problems, been able to start a technology company, and been able to take something that <coughs> an entire industry, a $6.4 trillion dollar food and beverage industry and discover a problem that they're overlooking consumers that look like us, right? And to be able to address it uniquely. Why do I feel that way? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I just, um, it's just something that 
it's an insecurity that comes out. And I think being around people that are empowering and having those lists of accomplishments and being around people that can remind you. I'm, I was raised to be humble. Never would I ever strive to be on a stage um, to talk about my accomplishments. Um, yet sometimes it's good to be able to remind yourself in the morning that you are more than adequate. You, you will actually do something that you've never done before. And you see your true potential. Yes. Absolutely. So when I get stuck, it's all about planning my way out. So during COVID, um, I'm sure many of you know, like doulas were not able to work in hospitals to support our clients. And so I reached out to our governor's legal team and, um, you know, with a career in politics, I, I knew how to navigate the system. And we, um, there was an executive order from the governor that made um, doulas essential workers so I could support my clients after a few days during the stay at home order. So it's like working your way out of a problem and fear and that my business might close down. And I got, um, I wrote grant after grant, got, you know, denied multiple grants, but kept going. And I was able to um, keep our office space during the pandemic as well. And we pivoted to meet the clients of our clients' needs because they were isolated, they were anxious. It was such a stressful time to have a baby. I don't know if any of you birthed during the pandemic, but yeah, it's it was so challenging. So all of the support groups went virtual and we um, you know, taught virtual classes. I created the online Becoming a Mother course mm -hmm. to connect women all over the country. and. And then, um, you know, a lot of my clients were struggling with secondary infertility. So I um, created a, an online fertility support group with a nonprofit. So it's all about like, if you have a setback and you're doubting yourself, just keep working it and find a way out. Yeah. Yesterday as well, right? Yeah. Company almost being sold, but not quite. We could go, out, go back to the drawing board, pick up the uh, hopes and dreams, and rebuild it. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. So, for me, man, I love everything that everyone has said. Um, triggers for me is actually when you're disabled, uh, it's so interesting. They still haven't given me that definition of disability. And it's so interesting. I work with my doctors, and we're like, yes, let's not use that name yet because uh, there's a stigma with that where mm -hmm. it's so interesting. Um, even prior to COVID, I used to work remotely because um, I worked in an executive position where they actually created a position for me to work remotely. Uh, so people didn't know I was going through a lot, uh, you know, neurological issues, but like I was just performing, outperforming everyone, they're like, get ready, get ready, get ready. I'm winning, I'm recognizing for me, that's not winning. Like I knew I had to stop and realize what is the real win. Mm -hmm. um, my mom's friend always says, you, you either retire or expire. <laughs> <laughs> that time I was 35. <laughs> now you guys can, yeah, like I was a few years ago, but yeah. Um, I was 35 and I'm like, man, I'm gonna retire at 35? What am I gonna be doing? And it's so interesting, um, like I realized the moment I started showing up the way I am now with this new normal, it, um, actually before I used to even use like a, you know, uh, we call it, it's a walker, uh, upright walker, very fancy actually. So my brother called his, uh, calls it Ferrari. Ferrari. <laughs> so we walk, I walk with Ferrari and I'm telling you, everyone used to talk, stop me, like, where did you get that one? Like, oh my God, because most of the time physical therapy they give you the ones that you will never even go back to your normal self and you walk with heels. So I was like, man, I gotta work with my heels. I gotta, sometimes I need to do that. If I don't do it, that's, that's just not my personality. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so like this um, trigger, even me, people like, you know, looked at me in a different way. Like my job afterwards when, you know, strategy meeting will go, and they, the VP, everyone will see me, they're like, wow, 
I realized like they started, uh, they stopped inviting me to the meetings mm -hmm. and you know, passive aggressively, I was, you know, now being pushed to other projects. It's like, they want me to teach everyone everything, but like, you know, I'm not gonna be part of the group. And I was like, wow. And then also even dating, like people will love everything, will Skype and everything, video talk. And then when they see me walk, <laughs> <laughs> the next day I'm not going to get a call from anyone. <laughs> and I was like, wow, now this is the reality that people don't talk about mm. when you're disabled. And I was like, you know what? Like everyone said, I'm going to show people that you can still be you. You can still win. Yeah. You're needed. It does not matter. Like, honestly, for me, this is just physical. But man, my brain is like the same old brain <laughs> that, you know, like that top performer, right? Yeah. So I was able to accomplish a lot and, you know, and I just wanted to, I, I just want to keep on encouraging women to tap on that superpower. When you're told no, know that you care. You're needed. You, have, you deserve a seat in the table. I mean, don't give you the table, create your own table. Man, I always create my table and <laughs> we talk with other ladies. You don't have to wait for opportunities. Create your own opportunities. Yes. Take them. And just go with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This has been such an amazing journey. And I have to tell you, each and every one of you have added so much to my life. I love how confident you are. I cannot tell that you have a boss of I know that we, everyone has it, but you don't show it in well, the way you carry yourself. I have, a, I have a pin that says, I know we're recorded, but it says, same bitch, different day. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Like, I can show up differently. I can show up in pajamas. I can show up in a fancy ass dress. But I also, at some point, decided that, you know what? I've, my imposter syndrome took me from not wanting to share my full name. And my full name is Anastasia. It's different from Anastasia that Americans are used to. And for many, many years living in this country, I kind of defaulted to a local version of Stacy, so people, so people don't watch the, the full name. Mm -hmm. And at some point I was like, I, my name is Anastasia. I'm going to make the CEO of Wells Fargo say my name, right? I'm going to make the CIO, the chief executive and information officers, say my name, right? Because I deserve that. Mm -hmm. They're like, you feel empowered because I talk to you. I'm like, no. I feel empowered because I deserve that. Yes. I deserve that. Absolutely. And it's a daily mantra where I tell myself that I am awesome. I, like the, the, the exercise we're doing in the morning, mm -hmm. as a founder, I feel awesome. But like as a human being, I am not just unlimited and awesome and you need to know, know about me as a rest coach, but like I deserve to be here in all of my glory and so are so is each one of us yeah. and only it's only on us to take that space to claim that space because every time we don't it's a choice we make it's a choice we make against ourselves it's a choice against our own boundaries against our own worth and our own value so thank you each and every one of you and over to you have this silent confidence. I don't know, your presence just makes me feel confident. Well, thank Carry you. Carry that with you. Thank you. But Chrissy, your passion for what you do, the smile, that's so reassuring. Each one of you has some sort of amazing gift. And uh, Chrissy, you have this gentle love that you radiate. I don't think you know that. Thank but you. that makes a difference. It does. And the inner strength you have to say, it is amazing. So can we give them a big round of applause? And so action steps. I do want all of us to walk through with action steps that we can implement. And understand this. What has worked for them may or may not work for you. Because your values are different. Your experiences may not be such a thing. Your belief systems are different. But these are actions that have helped each and every one of us. We can help you too. But be ready to try failing again. Something doesn't work, take it off the list, try something else. But don't ever give up. Giving up should never be an option. Believe in yourself. Understand that progress is way more important than a 
accomplishment. Without progress, accomplishment and the last one, we have each other's support. This is the best environment you will ever have access to where we support each other. Find those people who you gel with. You may not work with everyone, but who are, you will find one person who can become your confidant over time and hold on to that person. We saw that yesterday. Again and 